So that's all for the uh, working mechanism for STP. Finally, let's look at another case when the topology change happened, what should the STP do? So here is an example. Actually, we have several different types of topology change. One topology change is the uh, root bridge fault. So we'll assume that the root bridge has some failure. Then what happened? Actually, uh, this one cannot transmit the MPDUs any longer. Then after 20 seconds, actually the switch to find that, okay, my upstream devices is broken. And for switch three, they can also find that, okay, my upstream bridge is closed. Then um, these switches may select itself as the root switch and send out the MPDUs. After they exchange the MPDU, they find that, okay, the switch two has the lower uh, MAC address. So switch two is selected as the root switch again. And then uh, this switch will assign its port as the root port, right? Because this is the root switch. Then the port should translate from the alternate port into the root port. And after they become the root port, they has entered the listening state, right? And then uh, after 15 seconds, they can enter the learning state to receive some the service data. And then another 15 seconds uh, passed, the switch can send out the service data. So that's all for the recovery from a root bridge fault. So in total, there will be 20 seconds, 15 seconds, 15 seconds. So in total, there are 50 second takes to recover from a root bridge failure. Okay, now we look at another kind of failure. We assume that there will be a link failure and this link is directly connected to the switch two. So from the switch two's point of view, this is a direct link fault. Okay, and for this scenario, we assume that there are two links connected with switch one. Uh, if this link has failure, then the switch two will, after 20 seconds, so this switch two can let the alternate port as the root port, right? Because this one becomes the root port from the root switch. Um, however, this port only after 15 seconds can become the learning part and then 15 seconds to become the forwarding part. So in total, there are 30 seconds needed to restore the whole packet transmission. Okay, so this is the discovery, the recovery of link direct link fault. Let's look at another example. If the indirect link has faults, so assume this link is failure and this switch one for this switch, it is an indirect link. Then what should these switches do? So first, after 20 seconds, this switch will find that the root switch disappear. So it will become a thing itself as root switch and then send out the configuration MPGU. After this one send out, uh, this one will also uh, receive the MPGU from the root and send to SW2. So the SW2, by comparing these two packets, they find that, okay, uh, there is a still root better than me, so I cannot be the root. I can only set my this pot to be the root pot. And then uh, this switch will also compare the two pots on this link. They find that this pot will have the lower pass cost. So this part is selected as the designated part. So this part will change from the alternate part into the designated part. So the status of it should be from the uh, blocked to the listening. So actually here they take 20 seconds to change from the alternate from the blocking to the listening. And then they will uh, need another 15 seconds to become the learning and another 15 seconds to become the forwarding state. So finally, it will take 50 seconds for the switch three uh, to recover the transmission on this part. So actually for this indirect link fault, actually there are 50 seconds needed to recover from an indirect link failure. 
Okay, so that's all for switch failure and link failure. However, there is still one problem. So look at this network as an example. You can see that if the network topology changed, actually the MAC address table will become incorrect. So for example here, originally switch 2 connected to host A and switch 3 connected to host B. So for this switch, if they want to forwarding package to host A, they will go through port 1. But if they want to forward through to host B, they will go from this path. So go from interface 3, like here. Okay. However, if this link has a failure, then this path will be disconnected. Then if the switch still forward package to host B through this link, then this cannot be successfully arrive host B. So the MAC address now becomes incorrect. However, for MAC address table, actually the aging time is 300 seconds. So you can imagine in the following 300 seconds, the packet to host B will all incorrectly send it. So the network will be disconnected in the following 300 seconds. This is a very long time. So is there any solution to reduce this time into some smaller number? Okay, so this is the idea for the topology change MPGU. So think of that. If the switch 3 finds that the topology has been changed, then this one should immediately transmit a topology change notification to its upper switch. And then this switch will feedback a topology change acknowledgement. And because this switch is not the root switch, it should further notify the root switch by sending a TCN again. And then when the root switch know that, okay, there is a topology change, it should notify all the other switches, the topology change command. Okay, so this message transmit to switch two and the switch two forward to switch three until all the switch know there is a topology change. And after receive this topology change message, all the switches should delete all the entries in the MAC address table. Because the network topology has been changed, so all the MAC address en table entry in the table actually is invalid. They should eliminate it, and then they should learn the forwarding table again from scratch. Okay, uh, In that case, the switch two will immediately learn how to transmit to packet B. They should transmit from here. So the recovery will be much more quickly.